is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. The Indians have become an explosive team at Progressive Field. And last night, Carlos Santana's walk-off homer sent the Tribe to their sixth straight win at home on an 0-2 pitch. Just how far the Tribe will go this year depends on their starting pitching. And so far in the month of June, it's the best rotation in the American League. Danny Salazar brings an all-star resume and a league-leading ERA to the mound next on Sports Time Ohio. Picture perfect day for baseball in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Warm and sunny here at Progressive Field as the Indians continue this three game series against the Chicago White Sox. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians have won six in a row now here at Progressive Field. And during this six game win streak, they have their first three walk off wins of the year. But it's hard to believe they hadn't had a walk off home run since 2014 before Carlos Santana did it last night. But the, as soon as they got their first walk off, it got them going. It was a single by Jan Gomes. That was the very first one. And then the next night, they come right back. A sacrifice fly by Mike Napoli. That was number two. Now you come home to start the road, uh, the homestand. Uh, off a long road trip and Carlos Santana on an 0 2 pitch hits his fourth career walk off home run and they were celebrating again last night and they did it at the right time. Now this has been the, the way they go about doing this thing on their six game winning streak at home. You score early you turn it over to the starters you let them do their thing and then hopefully you walk off happy and that's the way it's gone here in the last six games. Danny Salazar will start this game tonight for Cleveland. He leads the American League in earned run average. It's been eight years since an Indians pitcher last led the league in ERA. It's got to go back to the Cy Young year of Cliff Lee. Well, you know, Danny Salazar, you watch hitters. They swing and miss an awful lot. They look at themselves and they say, I can't believe I can't catch up to that. He throws it by him. He's got a great changeup. He's one of the toughest guys to get a base hit off of. He goes out there. If he can command his fastball, he's going to be awfully tough to hit. He's seven and three. This year, he's four and one at home with a 150 ERA and he's going to go up against James Shields. It'll be his third start uh, since becoming a White Sox and he has struggled in his first two outings. The Indians have not struggled here at home. They've won six in a row as we've already told you when we come back tonight's first pitch plus we'll check in with Andre Knott who has more on the Indians newfound home field advantage. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
Snap throw. Close play. Got him. It's in the alley. That's going to go all the way to the wall. And the Indians take the lead. Shut back. He's out of room. We're out of here. On an 0-2 pitch, Carlos Santana says, start the fireworks show, baby. What a way to start the homestand. And tonight's game between the Indians and White Sox is being broadcast on AFN. The American Forces Network broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea. Welcome in everyone as the Indians and the White Sox square off here tonight in a key American League Central Division matchup. The Indians lead Kansas City by a half a game and with last night's loss Chicago in fourth place but just three and a half games off the pace. Indians have won six straight at home. Starting to feel that good home mojo. And with more on that, let's go downstairs to Andre Knott. Well, there's obviously a buzz in the air, guys, with the Cavaliers. They went away from winning the NBA championship, and that has not been lost by the Cleveland Indians and the guys in the dugout on the home side. And last night, Jason Kipnis came through with a big hit, and he told me today, he goes, we just want to ride that wave that's going around here in Cleveland. Here's tonight's Hear Right Sounds of the Game. Good buzz going around the city right now, obviously with Cavs and us in first place. Um, uh, if you're a Cleveland sports fan, now it's a good time right now, and uh, so I was in, we enjoyed having a huge crowd there last night. Um, I hope they enjoyed it. It was a fun game for everyone. That we, the way it turned out, but with that double, uh, we've been struggling a little bit as an offense, and just to come up with a big hit there and a big time, and um, it, it, was, it was exciting. So I was pumped up. Jason also knows that the offense has to play better. He's hoping coming back here, guys, will be the help that the team needs because they've hit better here at home. But they're looking forward to another big crowd. And Kipnis is excited because everybody's wearing his jersey here tonight as it was a giveaway. <laughs> well, you're right, Andre. The Indians are averaging better than five runs a game here at Progressive Field. So that does bode well for an offense that struggled on the road trip. An offense that didn't get the clutch hits on the road trip. Their, their numbers with running and scoring, runners in scoring position on the 10 game road trip were dreadful. But last night, the key hit, the clutch hit return. Well, and, and that's how it goes. It, it comes and it goes throughout the course of the year. You've got to weather those uh, storms when you, you're not scoring or you're not getting the key hits to drive in those runs. You've got to find ways to get, do the little things right. You can't make mistakes. You can't make errors. You can't give runs when you're not getting the big hits and, and, and driving them in. So you just have to find a way to win. And I'll tell you, they're starting to do that here. They're getting a, a lot of positive vibes and momentum coming here at home. Yeah, on that just completed road trip, the Indians were 177 for a team batting average with runners in scoring position. But as Rick said, you know, you, you don't stay high. You don't hit 300 for the whole year. Right. You go through those ups and downs. And the key is, as you said, find a way to win when you don't get some of those. Yeah. Win a two to one game, win a three to two game, do something to help your team in another way play good defense play good defense uh, move a runner bunt them over do the little things the little things over the course of the long year will win you more than clutch hitting will consistently because it will not stay consistent now the Indians have been a team that has thrived on its starting pitching and nobody better so far this year maybe than Danny Salazar who leads his team out onto the field leading the American League with a sparkling earn run average of just two point one nine. That is phenomenal. Now when Cliff Lee won the Cy Young Award his ERA was two fifty four and over the course of thirty some odd starts that's amazing. Yeah it really is he's he's uh, He's on a roll. He was bumped back and missed that one start. But I'll tell you what, this guy, his stuff is about as good as anybody in the league. Take a look at the starting lineup for Robin Ventura and the White Sox tonight. Tim Anderson, the rookie, once again will lead it off. Adam Eaton in the two hole. Jose Abreu, 0 for 3 last night, but had an RBI. Melky Cabrera, Todd Frazier, Deanna Navarro, bat in the middle. Then it's Brett Laurie, Avisail Garcia, and J.B. Shuck batting ninth. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher will be Danny Salazar. And Danny on the year seven and four. He's four and one in his own ballpark right here, 150 ERA. So he's only made five starts. So he has been terrific here in his 36 innings, allowed just 21 hits and six runs, 12 walks, 38 strikeouts at home. So go on out there, get the first three outs, and let's see if your offense can get on the board. Now let's take a uh, look at the defense behind him tonight. It is brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this. It's going to be 
Ramirez in left, Naquin is in center, Chisholm over and right. Uribe back in there starting at third base. His first game back. Lindor at short, Kibnis at second, Santana at first, Gomes doing the catching. Bill Miller, the crew chief, has the plate tonight. Tom Woodring at first, Tony Randazzo at second, Todd Tischer is down at third, and we are just about ready to go. For the White Sox, Joe McEwing will be the third base coach. Daryl Boston is over at first. White Sox were held to just two runs last night by the Indians pitching staff. An RBI ground out allowed a run in the third. And then of course they tied it in the top of the ninth on back to back doubles by Laurie and Garcia. First pitch swung on and fouled on the right side by Tim Anderson. Well, this young man is a very aggressive hitter. He likes to get after it early. Has done a nice job since he's been called up. Inserted into the leadoff spot. Just his eighth game in the big leagues. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Anderson, nine hits and 30 at bats. Showed good speed, too. Not a guy you want to walk. He stole a base last night. Bouncer to Aribe, fairly routine play. And just like that, Juan Aribe back in the fold, <laughs> one down. Welcome back. First game back, gets the first ball hit to him. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. For the Indians offensively, facing James Shield, that fastball changeup, the separation not quite as great as it once was. And for Danny Salazar, tempo, when he works at a faster pace, he usually is more successful. Yeah, in his last start, he had four walks. Remember, he was—he wasn't as quick as he was. Later in the game, he started to get there. He still battled his way through it. But when he can command the fastball early in the game, this guy is tough as nails. 77 degrees under sunny skies at game time here tonight. Swing and a foul into the glove. It's quickly 0 and 2. Salazar has made one start against the White Sox this year. Came back on April 8th. It was at Chicago. Five and a third, two hits, and just one run. Walked three, struck out seven, got the win in that game. Adam Eaton pops this foul out of play left side. It stays, no balls, two strikes. Slaps it again, just spoiling it. Yeah, that's exactly what he was doing there. Didn't try to do anything but foul it off. Another nice crowd still filing in. Yeah. The 0 2. And a breaking ball got him looking, locked him up. And Salazar has his first strikeout, two down in the inning. Take a look at this on our Nissan pitch tracker. There it was right there. I don't know. You know, there's sometimes I'm thinking that's a breaking ball or a slider, but sometimes his changeup goes like that. Yeah. Not sure what it was. It was 86. I don't think Adam Eaton had any idea what it was either. No, you ask him, he'll say, I don't know. It was off speed. He couldn't pull the trigger. Here's Jose Abreu. Picked up an RBI and a ground out last night. Takes an off-speed pitch and whacks it pretty good. Deep right center field. Naquin on the move. Makes the catch. Tyler Naquin with a fine running catch. He went a mile for that ball. And the White Sox go one, two, three, and the Indians are coming to bat.
Carlos Santana once again will lead things off for the Indians with a right hander on the hill tonight. Let's take a look at the starting nine for Terry Francona brought to you by Progressive. Jason Kipnis bat second. Francisco Lindor will hit third. Then it's Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, and Juan Arebe back in the lineup hitting sixth. Lonnie Chisinau, Jan Gomes, and Tyler Naquin rounded out. In our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher, James Shields, only making his third start since being acquired by the Sox. A guy that we've seen many times in the past. Down low ball one. Fastball changeup slider pitcher. This is his. 17th career start against the tribe. He's missed with the first three. Now he deals. And he missed again. Ball four. Santana has a free pass to start the game. And up comes Jason Kipnis. Let's set that White Sox defense for you. They've made only 28 errors. They are rated first in the league percentage wise. It's Cabrera in left, Shuck in center, Eaton in right. Frazier at third, Anderson at short, Laurie at second, Abreu at first, Navarro behind the plate. Jason Kipnis, one for four last night, had a key double. That came in the eighth inning and it gave the Indians the lead at that point, two to one. Kipnis seems to have a knock, a knack for playing well against a team from Chicago where he grew up. The ball in the air pretty well. Deep left field. Back goes Cabrera. He's out of room. It's going to be off the wall. High off the 19 foot wall in left field. Kipnis into second with a double. Stopping at third is Santana. He missed a home run by maybe a couple of feet. Well, it's really put a charge into that baby. It's been a while since we've seen Kip drive the ball to left field. And I mean, he drives this one. This one was elevated. He stayed back nicely on it and put a good swing. And that ball goes high off the left field wall for a double. Didn't miss by much, but sets up the inning very well. Second and third, his 13th double. Nobody out here in the first. Told you in that six game winning streak in the open, they've scored first in five of the six games. Now, Francisco Lindor steps in now as the Indians try to pounce on James Shields. The guy whose confidence may be waning a bit at the moment. They don't want to let him off the hook. White Sox did a lot of side work between starts with James Shields because there was some talk that maybe they'd bump him back, give him an extra day's rest. They decided to keep him on his regular turn. Bouncing ball. It skips. Laurie makes the play, throws wide of the bag, safe at first. Indians take the lead as Santana scores. Laurie's throw forced Abreu to have to reach back towards the infield, and in doing so, his foot came off the bag. Well, once he starts sliding, he's on the ground. He had to come up quickly, and he throws off balance. And that off balance throw, you can see Abreu's foot comes off the bag, enables Lindor's foot to get down there, beat him out, and get the infield single. Even if he was out, his job was well done because he hit the ball on the ground to the right side. Santana scored. Kipnis went over. They still have runners at first and third. I think they might challenge this, Rick. They, they can. It was close. It looked like Abreu may have gotten his toe on the bag. Ventura's thinking it over. Boy, in the first inning, yeah, I mean, you almost have to be well, sure, don't you? He definitely came off. I did see daylight. The now whether that is, yeah. did he get it back on in time? That I don't know from our vantage point. We're too high. Okay, we're waiting. We're waiting. And Forget it. And he said no, thank you. Yeah, so it'll go as a base hit. Or thank you, sir. May I have another, depending <laughs> on your well. point of view. One nothing, Cleveland runners at first and third. Nobody out. Mike Napoli, the batter. 
So credit Lindor with a single and an RBI. And now Napoli looking to inflict further damage. Rick, Robin Ventura was was vague and understandably so when the writers asked him, well, what did he work on between starts? He said, well, you know, he and Don Cooper worked on some stuff. Right. They, they, he, right. He said they feel very good with where he's at right now, but you, you got to prove it. Well, and you can't tell anybody what they were working on. I mean, there are issues. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with his psyche, first of all. And some of it may be mechanics. You know, maybe a little mechanics. He, he, this is only his third start since being over there. They got to look at film and, you know, try and break somebody down and tell them what they're doing wrong. And they haven't had them. Yeah. But for a couple of starts. So to me, it's more of a, you know, just trying to a positive. Let's pat on the back. Let's go get him. He's been around. Big game James is his name. Right. And the psyche thing. You know it's not the same situation but you were traded in the middle of the season and one of the things Robin said to look he wants to impress his new teammates yeah. he wants to fit in right away maybe he's trying too hard well sure he leaves San Diego you come over here to this oh boy Napoli crushes a deep right field Eaton back go on to Souvenir City and James Shields throws his hands to the heavens as if to say what else can go wrong a three run homer for Napoli a four run First for Cleveland. Yeah. This is the second time, Rick, that we've seen Napoli go opposite field for a home run here. Well, he that's his 11th home run in this ballpark and his 35th RBI here. Now, for James Shields, he's given up uh, overall about what 17 home runs 10 have come in the first couple innings. That's his sixth home run in the first inning. He's given up five in the second. He's already given up five home runs in three starts now with the White Sox. Well that's not going to help your confidence right there. No doubt about that. Remember it was against Kansas City Rick and it was Maybe a little wind aided yes. when he went off. Yes. This That's one was true. into the wind and it still got out of here. Well, when Napoli hits the ball, he's so strong he can hit it out anywhere. Whooped. Anderson. What a play! No, can't hold on. And on the second base goes Ramirez. Oh, that young man made a phenomenal effort. He had it, but I think when he hit the ground, the ball jarred loose. Well, that's the way it's going if you're James Shields. Great effort by Anderson. It was just a flare. Ramirez hits it. He gets there in time. He puts it out, and it just comes out of the glove. There you'll see it in, hit the ground, and it bounces out. The ground cannot cause a fumble. You can must it? maintain <laughs> control through the process of catching the ball. I mean, well, it was great effort. It came out. It'll go as a double for Ramirez. So, boy, the first five have reached here for the Indians, and this is not the way the White Sox wanted to see James Shields start this ball game. And Cooper already out to the mound. Let's go down ringside to Andre Knott. <laughs> okay, Jim. <laughs> I got to tell you, this might not be the game plan for the White Sox and Shields, but it was a game plan for the Indians. Absolutely. No one, no one wanted to talk about stuff when I asked them about James Shields. They said, look, the way he's been pitching the last couple of days, we want to try to jump on him as soon as we can. So we, as you guys are talking about, mentally, they were more worried about him than physically. Well, they've jumped on him without a doubt. Well, he he started it. He walked Santana on four pitches, and that's not what you want to do going out there when you're you know teetering or bordering on confidence. Is walk the first guy. I'll tell you what, he walked Santana on four pitches, and then it was like one of those bull riding competitions where they slung open the door, and it's been absolutely chaos ever since. The Indians. Driving here. There's Juan Uribe. First time back in the lineup since that uh, game in Anaheim on the previous road trip. Games and strikes out here, first out in the inning. And with 
one now. Lonnie Chisinau coming up. Well, Rick, coming into this game, and I, I understand it's only a couple of starts, but in his first two American League starts this year, opposing hitters are batting 447. Yeah, it's him. you know, this guy has logged a boatload of innings in his career. And you know the separation from his fastball and his changeup may not be as great as it once was. Well, you we look at that. That's 88 miles an hour. Now he used to throw 92 to 94. Okay, with his fastball, and that changeup was devastating. He threw a couple different kinds of changeups, and also had the breaking ball. So when that separation comes down, uh, guys, CC Sabathia was going through it, and he's starting to settle. He's developed into becoming a, a new pitcher now because he's not even trying to throw hard. You've got to finesse him, and that's not easy for people to do. Yeah, now when you get down to where he's at velocity wise, he's got to be pinpoint with his control. Either that or you got to be slower with your or, slow stuff. Or you've got to really change. Yeah, you've got to adjust on your changeup. You got to transform your game, man, is what you have to do. And it's not easy to do on the fly. I know he's left handed and it may not be the best analogy but I think that Jamie Moyer who kind of midstream remade himself and he went from <laughs> he was throwing that change it was like 60 69 yeah, it, it, yeah right it was down under 70 and then you know it was different speeds just missed outside it's ball four he's walked his second in the inning. In today's game, we are participating in the home run challenge to benefit prostate cancer research. So far, after five days this week, $1.7 million has been raised. You can make a pledge by going to homerunchallenge.org. And Mike Napoli with that home run adding to the donations, the money that will pour in. Well, Jan Gomes with two on and one out. Takes a look, it's down low, ball one. Still no activity in the Chicago bullpen. Well, you're already down four, so you're looking right now. He doesn't want to see people getting up. He's got to get out of this and do it in a hurry and try and regroup. Well, you but, know, you talk about his last start, Rick, that one. Against Detroit, where he gave up the six runs in what I think was the first couple innings. He did last five. Yeah, but you know what? Falling behind doesn't help. I mean, he's 13 balls and 13 strikes. Gomes well, sends a towering pop, shallow center. In comes JB Shuck. And on that 2 0 pitch, that is out number two. Will bring up nine, Tyler Naquin, the number nine hitter. So nine men come to the plate at least here in the first inning for the Indians. And as Naquin makes his way to the plate, left hander up in the Chicago bullpen. And Tyler Naquin batting 300 on the year. All four of his home runs, nine of his 10 RBIs have come against right handed pitching. I'll tell you, it's a tough sun field here at Progressive Field, but we got my man hooked up with some flip downs today. Oh, I'm telling you, it's that's, yeah, it's needed here. See, show the fans how this works. It goes up here when, when the clouds come into play and when not, <laughs> boom, just a flick of the finger. Old school. Yes, indeed. This is what we were talking about—the flip downs that nobody likes to wear anymore. But they—they really—they really take out the sun. I mean, they. Well, yes. Tony gave me a pair that a little scratched up. <laughs> so those might have been in the bottom of the bag. <laughs> I think so, but that's that's quite all right, Tony. I love them, and I will catch anything hit my way. Make one of the liner left, diving attempt. No, no catch. Scoring is Ramirez. Into third safely is Chisinau down to second. Naquin. A five run first for Cleveland on a ball that, hey, it's not an easy play. It looked like Cabrera was there. It looked like he had it, but he couldn't hold it. 
So for the second time in the inning a White Sox defender almost made a spectacular play. He was I think that glove was just a little bit behind. He needed it out front a little bit. It went off the end of the finger and he couldn't hold on to it. It's just been that kind of inning for the White Sox. So uh, in comes Ramirez. He will score. Chisenhall goes to third. I guess it's going to be a double. I think it has to be right. Carlos Santana for the second time in the inning. He walked on four pitches to start the game. Single. Okay. Went to second on the throw to third. Gotcha. That'll work. Santana broke his bat. And Anderson makes a spectacular catch to save further damage for Chicago. Ten men come to the plate. The Indians played five three on one swing of the bat for Mike Napoli. Nothing. Cleveland on top. What a first inning for the Indians bats. And Danny Salazar with plenty of support. Well, this is outside ball one. Danny has a lot of friends at that ball club because he gets seven runs of support when he's on the mound, and they're off to a tremendous start here. Salazar in the first inning through 10 pitches, nine of them were strikes. And that's what you like you know, to see. How many times have we seen that though, Rick? Unfortunately, when the Indians haven't played well at home, it's because maybe they're behind before they ever come to bat. Yeah, that's happened a lot. This is a, I know we keep giving this number and we say things, but it is something when they score first. I, for whatever reason, their confidence flies, and it, I don't know if they relax more, but boy, they're, they're awfully good when they get on the board first. 27 and 7 now on the year when they score first after last night, so there's something to it. And, I mean, and remember last year they were good when right. they scored first. When you can, when you have the kind of pitching like they're throwing out there right now, you get them a few runs and uh, it, it's almost over. Turn it over to your pitchers. I'm not so sure about the statistic about home and away though. I'm starting to come to the realization maybe that it's not as big a factor as we think. Because last year the Indians couldn't play well, well darn at home. This and they year, played. This year they're tearing it up at home. There's a fly ball to left. Well, the difference between home and road this year, uh, uh, offense, it's the run support. Yeah, and as Terry said, you know, hey, when you bat, when you're at home, you get to bat last, and that's that's why they won the game last night. Take a look at our Lowe's home field advantage, and at home, Danny Salazar's ERA is so low you can almost barely see it, 150. Better than all those Well, guys. we saw Quintana last night. You know how good he can be. And Estrada's a change-up master. We'll get to see him on the next road trip, I would imagine, because we have four games there in Toronto. I know there's no crying in baseball, but 
how can he not feel a little bit sorry for Jose Quintana? Well, how well he's pitched and just you know can't ever get a run. When you when you look at it, he doesn't he hasn't gotten runs for about two or three years. You know, we talk about Kluber. I think this guy has worse support than Corey does, uh, or has had, let's say, in the, in the in the past three years. Todd Frazier socks one high in the air, deep left. Back is Ramirez. He might have room here. Yeah, that's up there. He will. Shy of the warning trip. Two down. I'll tell you what though, you go seven straight starts, that's got to test your. I'm not, I'm, it's not confidence. It's got to test just your mental toughness when you get zero or at most one run of support in uh -huh. seven consecutive starts. Yeah, five runs in his last seven starts. It's it's been something. Meanwhile, Danny Salazar already has five on the board. And two down here in the second inning as Deanna Navarro takes a look at ball one. I think I'd start offering incentive packages to my players <laughs> or take them out to dinner or, or do something to see if it can change anything. You guys get me three runs. It's a steak dinner for yeah, everyone. Yeah, no kidding. Whoever drives in. Two one pitch. You often hear about that. Uh, I think more so in football when a guy has a big year, like maybe leads the league in rushing, he buys a lot. His offensive, offensive right? Yeah, you sure there. do. But you, you hear it a lot. But you know what? This is a team game. If you're a pitcher and they're at giving you Salazar seven runs a game. Don't be afraid to take some of those guys out to dinner that are driving them all in. Well, I was going to ask you, like, in the in the instance of, of Lenny Barker throwing a perfect game, was there anything ever did he take you guys out? That he? Oh, we all went out together anyway. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't have to be a perfect game. <laughs> there were many of imperfect games. <laughs> That's right. Somebody else got the tab. Six up, six down. Middle of the second. Five nothing, Cleveland. I'm at Bad App. You can stay connected all season with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Jason Kipnis doubled and scored in the first. Takes a pitch up high, ball one. Yeah, drove the ball to left field. 
Remember that month of May he had last year where he was driving a lot of baseballs to left field. It's already the fourth 2 0 count for James Shields tonight. We're in the second inning. That's I just not. think I just think teams learn for after last year. They're not giving him any fastballs up and away that he can drive. Just if anything, they're showing him breaking balls away to get him out on his yeah, foot. Yeah, right. But well, he had that fastball up and away that he drove yeah. the first time up. That's where you want to try and bust him in with the hard stuff and take it soft away. I understand that, but if you miss your location, you fall behind, and he is again three and one. Well, he draws the leadoff walk and you know. That first inning started with a four pitch walk to Carlos Santana. Then Kipnis, you just talked about it, up and away, drove it high off the wall. And Lindor knocked in a run on a nice effort here by Lori, but Abreu came off the bat. And then Napoli clobbered him with a three run homer. Finally, the ninth man to bat in the inning, Tyler Naquin shot a base hit in the left. That scored another run. And if not for a sensational play by Anderson, the shortstop, they may have scored a couple more. Yeah, everything was just out of their reach, just off the end of their gloves, anything they could get to. Low. One ball, one strike. Ball. Lori won't get that one. Kipnis is going to go to third. Here's the throw by Eaton. Not in time. The Indians at the corners with nobody out. Lindor already two for two in the ballgame. Well, nice job by Kipnis to go from first to third on that ball as it goes into the hole. You have a lead. You can be much more aggressive on the bases. The scoreboard will dictate that. The ball's behind them, so you're thinking, I got to be on third base. Eaton with a good arm. And he has, I think, seven assists, but comes up with a good throw, but not before Kipnis can get there. First and third, nobody out. Don Cooper was on the top step of the dugout like maybe he was going to go out and stall for a little time. They've got the bullpen busy again. But for now, it's Shields against Napoli. There goes Lindor, and he's got this one stolen easily. And that'll be Frankie's 11th stolen base on the year. Well, he was going to get it even though that ball comes out of his glove after the tag. He was safe sliding in there. Down low. One ball, one strike. Well, remember we told you last night when Quintana was throwing strike one. The Indians couldn't get any hits. Well, tonight when Shields is going one ball, no strikes, the Indians are five for five. Ooh. So he better start throwing strikes. No, I don't oh, think one. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, one count. I don't think he's going to be long for this game any way you slice it. This is perks up for the second time, and we're in the second inning. If Napoli gets a base hit here, or maybe even if he walks, I think that's going to be it for Shields. Hold off that change up and it's two and two. Lindor at second. Getting this over at third. Navarro says, hold on, let's let's think about this and try again. For the average fan, you watch it like, how in the heck do they know which sign is which? I mean, it goes through them so fast. Yeah, it's basic. I mean, I know it's it's one. You know, you, you know which the sequence is, but I mean, he's going through you them know, so and fast. Plus, catchers can hit spots too. You know, it's yeah. one, two, three. If he touches a spot, it's a certain pitch too. Before he, so anything he puts down could be nothing. 
Right. Every team is different. Every catcher is different on what the pitchers want. Happily with that 11th homer in the first inning. Fouls one back there. It stays two and two. Mike now with 48 runs batted in. He was among the league leaders. And that uh, that home run should get him right back up there in the top ten. And if he gets another big knock right here, maybe in the top five before this game's over. That's the thing about middle of the order hitters. Sometimes those RBIs can come in bunches. Struck him out. And James Shields with a huge strikeout for his own good. Two down. Or one down here in the uh, second inning. Well, that's a changeup from Shields. Take a look at it. it's down. It's in a pretty good location with two strikes. That'll go on our Nissan pitch tracker. And we'll bring up Jose Ramirez. Ramirez hit the blooper in the shallow left. That Anderson almost made a phenomenal catch on, but could not hang on to it. Where I look at it as a free at bat as a hitter. Second and third infield back. A lot of times you try to elevate a ball, you could hit one right on the ground now up the middle and get an RBI and drive him in. Looks like it's going to find the seats and it will. Bouncer to first. Abreu comes home with the throw and he got him at the dish. Now Kipnis tagged out, two down in the inning. Okay, going on contact. Abreu comes home, gives a good throw and a good feed, and they get Kipnis. He didn't hit this ball hard, and it was easy for Abreu. He was momentum coming forward, and he slides right into the tag. So a fielder's choice, 3 2 for Ramirez, gets Kipnis at the plate. This might be an interesting one. Did he have the plate blocked in? Is that something that they might want to take a look at? I and thought Terry he, Francona is going to go out and ask him about it. He's got the plate blocked. Now, well, he, had, I don't know. I guess you could say he had the ball. Kip, where is he? He's nowhere in sight. Got to give him uh, a, a lane to slide, and there's nothing fine. there. That's. No, he, I mean, I'm no. just saying that's the rule. I know. I, he's out. That's. He had a lane in there between his legs. Well, Terry went out, had his say. And whatever home plate umpire Bill Miller told him, he seemed to accept. James Shields trying to wriggle off the hook here. A rebate with a ground ball gets by Frazier. He won't get off the hook. His defense lets him down this time. A rebate knocks home Lindor, and it's a six to nothing Cleveland lead. Well, Frazier had to take a step, one step, started his second step, and a ball gets underneath his glove. So your rebate will get a, a base hit. That's going to be it for James yeah, Shields. It sure will. Another rough one for him. 
Can't get out of the second inning and six runs are on the board. The Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made for a shell shocked James Shields for the third time in a White Sox uniform. He is knocked out early. Gives up six runs here tonight. Matt Perk will be coming on when we come back. Two out new pitchers left hander Matt Perk James Shields in three starts with Chicago eight and two thirds thirty three base runners oh in boy. eight innings. Wow. Yeah well I think two thirds tonight with seven hits and also three walks so there's ten base runners an inning and two thirds so boy oh boy it's back to the drawing board I guess for them that could be a, an ongoing project there. Matt Perk coming on for the eighth time. Yeah, Lonnie Chisnall walked his first time up. And that's ball one. I just want to read again the quote from Robin Ventura. He's referring to both Don Cooper and James Shields. Quote, they're happy with him where he's at, that he'll be able to bounce back and give us a good start. He's been around long enough, I think he can bounce back from that. I mean, what what else do you want him to say? I mean, of course he's trying to inspire some confidence in right. this guy, but he, even Robin. He's got to be saying to himself, "Can we put him out there again? Well, we got to maybe rethink I'm this." I'm sure they'll discuss this. Yes, after a ball game and get together with the front office. Can you keep sending him out there and falling behind? Look, everybody likes by James five Shields. or six runs. I mean, he's a good guy, but your bullpen is getting it's good guy. He's getting worn out. Yeah, <laughs> you better pitch well, buddy. <laughs> I don't care what, how good a guy you are. You better have some some numbers out there. You can't keep putting him behind. The offense for Chicago is tough enough to begin with. No team can sustain that. Well, Matt Perk fares no better. He walks Lonnie Chisholm and the bases are loaded with two out. And Jan Gomes is the batter. And here comes Don Cooper, the pitching coach. I'll bet you this message is going to be short and to the point. Well, I know one thing. Perk will not be talking. And I don't think he'll be answering any questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Fine. Got it. You see that big white thing there? <laughs> Throw it over there. Now, again, hey, these are all hits, but this is how close sometimes. Well, that was the third hit of the game where he pulls a Bray off. That would have been one out. 
but that's a you know a tough play. But they you know sometimes they make them. There's three plays that first inning that could have been outs. There's a play in this inning that could have been an out. But when you're on your heels and you're down and you're losing, it, it, it just turns out that way. Those hits seem good to plays seem to get made by pitchers that work quickly and effectively and throw strikes. Gomes takes it's in the dirt. He has not thrown a strike. That's a good thing Lou Pinnell is no longer managing. Oh. If he was watching this, Lou, he might blow. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, what would he have done if he was managing in Cincinnati this year when they gave up 23 uh, games consecutively? He wouldn't have survived. No. He would have been out there pitching, I think. He'd have gone swimming in the Ohio River, <laughs> or some of those pitchers would have. Oh, boy. Oh, here again again he has not thrown a strike this is six pitches since coming into the ball game and right now it's not an easy time of night to see the baseball either I mean I would think the pitcher has a little bit more of an advantage if you're anywhere around the strike zone three and oh well we witnessed it here four consecutive walks with the bases loaded didn't we I know it's six nothing but you almost got to take two here if you're on young goals. Well I'm not going to say that because John doesn't like to take one. He likes to swing. Ball four unbelievable. Matt Perk has thrown eight straight balls out of the strike zone since entering the game. He's walked in a run. It's now seven to nothing Cleveland. Now Brett Laurie, the second baseman, comes in. And again, this this doesn't look like encouragement as much as it looks like, hey, let's go. Tyler Naquin drove in a run with a hit in that first inning. That's inside. Another ball, and he throws it away. Navarro threw it to nobody in particular. And everybody moves up one as Arrive comes home to score to make it eight to nothing. Did he try and hold on to the I ball and stop it? I think that's exactly what happened. What, I, I, I don't know if uh, Frazier was it. Maybe the runner was either in his line or something, and maybe he tried to hold up. Let's get a look. And then he spikes it right into the ground. That looked like that throw Ryan Rayburn made a couple years ago in Kansas City. Yeah, it looks like that he goes, was trying yeah. to hold it, and it was too late. And so that'll be an error. Now they're really messing up now, throwing the ball all over the place, walking people. It's not looking good. And Perk finally throws his first strike. It took him nine. No, it took him ten pitches. And he's got one in there. Two one. Three balls, one strike, and it's the only strike Perk has thrown. And Naquin fouls one back out of play. Well, someone's going to have to log some innings for the White Sox tonight. I don't know who it is, but someone's going to have to. You got a quick turnaround and a day game tomorrow. Well, they got another yeah. guy up in the bullpen. Yeah, I see that. I see that. But boy, this is one of those games that can do a little damage to a bullpen. The 3 2 pitch. Oh, my. Ball four. Three consecutive walks issued by Matt Perk, and the bases are loaded yet again. 
but he's coming on the left hander to face the left handers and when you're not throwing strikes you're not going to get the borderline calls. So that one a little off the plate doesn't get it but boy oh boy he better regroup or he's he's heading for the showers next. Carlos Santana walked and scored in the first and then ended the first with a little broken bat liner that Tim Anderson the shortstop made a phenomenal catch on. That's you, pretty you, crazy. You, you don't even have to swing the, the bat. When you're batting for the third time in the second inning. Wow. Yeah. Dan Jennings is the left hander. Got a news flash out there. The 1 0. Hopped him up. This should get him out of the inning. Although I may have spoken too soon. Oh, McBray's got it. Inning over. Indians tack on three more. It's now eight to nothing. Played enough baseball to know that when you don't pitch well and things start to go sideways, they have a way of compounding themselves. And then you make a bad play defensively, and you get a catcher in in between, and he ends up throwing one down the line. And, and what he wants to do is like, look, guys, you got to tidy things up. Yeah, you, know, you can't well, let, let this go completely. It all starts in the center of the diamond. They've walked six batters in two innings. The White Sox pitching staff foul the third base side. You know, you throw in some hits, and a, home, a three run homer, and it's, yeah, you st started off a slippery slope. Popped him up, right field. And I'm thinking Danny Salazar is loving it, though. He's got no problem with this whatsoever. Seven up, seven down. Let's go down to Andre. Andre, what's he doing in between innings? They've sent <laughs> nine men to the plate, ten men to the plate in the first two innings. Well, he's had to go back behind, stretch out, and keep his body limber. He's done that. You know, this is a big game for him because he's had a lot of runs scored and he can't find it. You guys talked about in the open. Danny has to find a rhythm, and he told me after that last start in Anaheim, he's got to find a way to take care of himself and be better and not wait until something happens against him before he gets going. So this yeah. is the perfect for him. And also, he came out after stretching in the last inning and he saw his teammate was wearing the wrong jersey, but it's his jersey. I don't know if you find yeah, Trevor Bowers, who pitched well last night. Check out the back of that jersey. I love it. He's got a Danny Salazar jersey. <laughs> well, Danny could Maybe he it. wants some runs like Danny gets. I, you know what? That <laughs> might be. There you go. I, I, I might have to work on that. That's that what I, I'm telling you. That's what it's all about. Hang that jersey up on the bat rack every game. Well, every pitcher may be wearing one after what they've yeah. seen tonight. No kidding. Well, Andre. 
You know, one of the guys up here in the booth, Tommy Bow, was asking me before the game. He's watching Danny with his long toss program before the game, and he looks like Bauer. He's going yep. from foul pole to foul pole. These two have a pretty good friendship, relation, working relationship, whatever you want to They're call compl it. They're two completely different guys, but when it comes to pitching, they do kind of play off of each other a little bit and, and respect each other. I know in the beginning of spring training, I asked both. What's the pitch that you would take from another pitcher? And they both talked about the others. You know, Bauer said, if I could do have his changeup, he goes, I would find a way to take it. And Danny on the other side loves things that, you know, that he sees from Trevor. They've got a bond that's different, but if you're around it, it's pretty special. Now the one two pitch way outside. That's the beauty of, of sports, though. You can have two guys that are completely opposite personality wise, but the one thing that binds them together is sure. baseball and pitching. And so they've got that common ground they can work on. I'd take Salazar's fastball and his changeup. <laughs> All the way to the Benko. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Give me a Brinks truck, will you please? Strikeout number two for Danny. The first eight retired. Now remember his last time. Remember he started getting all those strikeouts, and that pitch, the pitch count was piling up for him, man. I like it when he gets out on three pitches or less, and he's throwing strikes because that means he goes deeper into the game. That's our Circle K strikeout. Yeah, that changeup pretty devastating to Garcia. And now JB Shuck. Four of the first eight hitters have gone down on three or less pitches. That was Trevor's problem last night. A lot of five or five or plus pitches to batters, and that pitch count comes up and gets you out early in a ball game. Although he battled and worked hard to go seven. Good fastball. That was in for a strike. Down, base is empty. And Salazar's 2 2 pitch. Off the plate. It's going to be a tough one. Danny grabs it, fires to first. Got him by a whisker. The White Sox go 1 2 3. And Salazar has retired the first nine to start the ball game. The Indians rolling 8 to nothing. The ball yard. Is that where Andre is? Uh, no, I still see him down there. Oh, the okay. He's still. Okay. He's the pit master. Just a reminder to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. I think 
it should be part of his job duties though to, to sample the various fare here at the ballpark give us I think sort of his does. critiquing and then you know maybe slide a few samples our way just I think he does do the tasting so we can all enjoy it. but I don't think we all enjoy it. no I see what you're saying I see where you're going with this he's down there in his own bay camera people so he can't even turn on his own microphone because he's got barbecue sauce <laughs> all over his fingers it's too slippery <laughs> or nacho cheese or whatever whatever he's trying well it's the weekend you know check the corner Jason Kipnis doubled and scored in the first walked he was tagged out at home plate in that second inning Fouled off. Oh, that was a very good breaking ball from Matt Perk. One down here in the third. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. On the Indians injury front down in Triple A Columbus, Cody Anderson, no structural damage, but uh, sore right elbow. Going to knock him out for maybe a week, I mean a month to a month and a half. Drive base hit right center. Eaton over, he'll cut it off. And Lindor is three for three on the night. Ah, here we go. He's starting to swing it now. All three singles for Frankie. Stayed on that ball beautifully the other way. Eight hits for the Indians. Lindor with three. Well, he's been on a pretty good roll. Through that one game in Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas City, right. That gives him 12 now on the year tied with Xander Bogarts. The league lead in multi hit games. There you go. That's, those are two pretty good shortstops right there. Those guys, they, they get that first hit and they want to keep on going. Right back to him. Taylor made double play ball, ends the inning. Three complete. Cleveland eight. Chicago nothing.
for KeyBank Kids Fun Day. Kids can run the bases post game thanks to Cleveland Clinic's Children's. Just visit Indians.com for the details. Tim Anderson leading off here in the fourth. It's been nine up, nine down so far for Danny Salazar. And he just overpowers Anderson with a fastball. Yeah, Tommy gave me a little note in between innings. Time of possession on the mound. Salazar 14 minutes, Sox pitchers 41. Ooh. Well, and again, you mentioned it before. Strikeouts are fun. Watching the guy with his stuff the strike people out's great, but the efficiency. Yeah. Three pitches or less. Get deeper into the ball game. There's comes a point in time where you need strikeouts. Number three for Salazar as he watches home plate umpire Bill Miller punch out Anderson. Well, just watch the location here, and I mean that's down at the knees, and that is a 96 mile an hour heater. There's not much you can do if you're the hitter. You take it and hope they call it a ball. But uh, he didn't. So you take the walk back. Great pitch. Eaton was called out on strikes his first time up. Are looking around. I'm not sure. Let me just get a little extra time here. 2 2. He rocks and rolls. Up and away. Full count. Well, 97. It just doesn't look like a lot of extra effort to get to 97. For him. And a line drive base hit in the left center for the first hit of the game for Chicago. A good at bat there by Eaton. He hangs in there. So the Sox get their first hit. Well, Arch, as you know, tomorrow, final round of the yeah. U.S. Open at historic Oakmont Country Club. And Oakmont is winning right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, that course is unbelievable. Everybody thought it would. 11 a.m. Eastern, only on Fox. We'll watch it live on Fox Sports Go. And tomorrow, if the weather stays the same as it is, those greens will even be quicker tomorrow than yeah. it is today. Abreu fly to deep center his first time up. It's a nice running catch by Tyler Naquin. That's out of play. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of the action before we came on today, and I forget who it was. Somebody was chipping up out of a tough fly out of the rough. Ball lands on the green. Looks like oh, that's a nice save from there. And then the ball took a left turn. And ended up about 30 feet away from the cup. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Something you don't see on television. You don't see the breaks. Right. Line drive, left field, base hit, Abreu. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Eaton going to stop at third. Nice play by Jose Ramirez to get it quickly off the carom. But now White Sox at second and third with one out. Back to back hits now for the Sox for Abreu. 
13th double. That looked like a change up away. The big man kept his uh, hands back. That was an 0 2 pitch right there by Salazar. So he must have been guessing change up because when you can throw 96 97, he stayed back nicely on the change up. Well, this is interesting. Melky Cabrera, I wonder if when he dove for that ball in left field, maybe uh, tweaks something because he's out of the ballgame. A pinch hitter, Jason Coates. Because it's not like the White Sox are out of this game. I mean, hey, it's rare, but Chicago this year has already had their largest come from behind win in franchise history when they were down 7 nothing right to the Tigers. That's true. So it's not like just because they're down eight runs here, Robin Ventura would just start pulling the plug. But if there is something wrong with Cabrera we'll let you know just as soon as we yeah I, I have to say you're right it was probably on that dive coming in it's only batted one time and that was in the second inning when fly to left upstairs three and oh Strike. Yeah, this is the guy that Danny can come back and get. You've got Frazier on deck. He's certainly, if he gets on, you got to make him hit his way on. And well, walked on. Well, the bases are loaded. White Sox with Todd Frazier coming up one swing of the bat here and all of a sudden it's a ball game. Well and if you're Salazar just remember you're one pitch away from getting out of this inning there's one out you need a ground ball. There's a called strike. Frazier fly to left his first time up. And it was one of those swings where off the bat it looked like it he hit it pretty well, but he, he didn't quite square it up. But that's the kind of swing he has. He's he's generally not far from hitting it square. Good pitch. 98 on the black. Yeah, I'm just looking at him now. I thought he was overthrown a little bit earlier. Now he's just relaxed and throwing it. Now he's got an opportunity. He can go for the strikeout. He makes a quality pitch. Swung on and missed. He overpowered him with a 97 mile an hour heater. Fourth strikeout for Salazar, two down in the inning. Yeah, that's the one thing Danny can do. Boy, he gets into situations, he can get out of them just like this. Three pitches. And uh, get the strikeout. That's out number two. He's one out away from. Still putting another zero on the board. The honor Navarro grounded out his only time up. Fastball at the knees right down Broadway. Swing, scooped by Lindor, throws him out, and Salazar gets out of a bases loaded one out jam. 
Eight nothing Indians, middle of the fourth. Tonight, Salvador Perez had quite a night in the uh, Royals thumping of the Tigers last night. He's also hit a nine straight. Yeah, he's he's uh, been about as hot as you can get. We witnessed that in his 12th home run last of the year last night. Jose Ramirez doubled and scored in the first, reached on the field of choice, scored again in the second. Bounced it in there. Two balls, two strikes. Berg trying to get back to that level mark of throwing balls and strikes, but he still has a ways to go. <laughs> Ramirez is rung up. He doesn't like the call. He says something to Bill Miller as he walks away. Well, Andre left the pit. He's out in the corner now. Look out. Put him up. Yeah, there he is. Hey, it's the I weekend. Try to, I try to find the best parts in the ballpark just <laughs> for you guys. That's out of baby. Great place to be tonight. A lot of Jason Kipnis jerseys being worn as that was a giveaway tonight. A lot of people here enjoying the Tribe Live section of the corner and the district. Don't forget, Indians play Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday here at Progressive Field against Tampa. Plenty of great tickets. Go to Indians.com to get those tickets as quickly as you possibly can. I feel like someone's behind me. This guy's giving away beer. This is a perfect place. Thirteen dollars. We give you your first drink. All at Indians.com. All righty, Andre. If uh, you know, if you see anything out there that's like fried dough, anything like that, we'll we'll try one of those for you. I'm I'm working on something. You guys stay right there. I'm working on something. <laughs> you're and always hey, hungry. You're too. always working on something. Hey, Andre, see you tomorrow, pal. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you ain't gonna see me Taz, tonight. Taz is out. Lonnie <laughs> Chisinau cuts. And misses tried to hold up, but he went too far. <laughs> we see a little stirrup down there. We'll know what's going on. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Challenge him with a good fastball. Man, 
he strikes him out. Yeah, Matt Perk, I was about to say a couple of batters ago, you know, he came into the game and walked three in a row, walked the bases yeah. loaded, walked in a run. Yes, and then throwing error, he would have walked in a couple. But since then, Rick, he's pitched very well. He's doing what Robin Ventura had hoped he would do, which is give him a couple innings at least. Before they can figure out how to go, who to go to next. Well, his job is to go out there as, uh, as hard as you can for as long as you can. And like I said, he's trying to get back to that even par throwing balls and strikes. You know, sometimes you figure, wow, how can a major league pitcher not just go out there and throw strikes? But hey, it can happen. Sometimes the harder you try to, to throw a strike, the tougher it is. And I don't care what level you're at. You can ask if anybody's ever pitched before, you know what it's like. People yeah. are yelling at you, come on, just throw That's strikes. Right. Hey, I'm trying to. <laughs> there is something to be said for that, and you know it. it it kind of goes back to what John McDonald told us about and I think there's a lot to that now he was talking about it from the standpoint of a shortstop or a third baseman if you're trying to throw it to a, to a perfect spot on right. the base you're probably going to have a tough time throw it to an area throw it to an area right. I think sometimes with pitching now granted they can't just throw to an area and pitching because it is about pinpoint control but when you start to lose a little bit and then you start to I've got to hit that spot I think that you hold on to the ball yeah, maybe you just start a fraction aiming of a second yeah, you start long. aiming it instead of relaxing yeah. and just letting it go right, but once again you, you, you can't pinpoint it you just got to you got to throw strikes sometimes, sometimes you, you give do the, just have to let it go yeah you're right. you give the hitters uh, too much credit sometimes because even when you're throwing batting practice and as much as we watch it on a daily basis you can throw a ball down the middle and guess what they could hit it at somebody. You know they could swing and pop it up. It's not like they hit everybody uh, every pitch and crush it out of the ballpark. The 2 2. And that's a base hit for Jan Gomes. He shoots one the other way. And Uribe will stop at second. Two on with two out. And Tyler Naquin. Well, it's a high breaking ball, and he was staying back on it. You know, normally he likes the ball down. He did him a favor. It was a breaking ball upstairs, but he did a nice job of hitting it in the hole. Tyler Naquin. And you see Gomes down at first base. Naquin drove in a run with a single in the first, walked in the second. I was just going to say. God, he finally got back to even par. 21 balls, 21 strikes, then he threw ball. Ball <laughs> one. Well, that was the amazing thing that. Tom Boschenek told me about James Shields coming into tonight's game. You know, the Sox starter had made two starts for Chicago. Seven innings pitched. And in those seven innings, he had thrown 190 pitches. That doesn't even seem possible, does it? There's a line drive. Base hit by Naquin left center field. That's going to get through almost to the wall. Stopped on the warning track. Arebe scores. Here comes Gomes. He scores two. The throw to third out of time. Naquin safe. Ball goes into the Indians dugout. No, it does not. And now we got to check on Naquin to see if he's okay. He went in hard at third and went right into Frazier. That ball narrowly missed going into the dugout. It might have hit the the post where the ball boy sits and stayed out. Otherwise, Naquin would have been able to score as well. Well, he gets a breaking ball that stayed middle of the plate. It was a line drive over the head of Anderson and misplayed by Coates, who just was uh, inserted in the left field. And this is after the ball gets by and they're throwing it in. He catches a knee. Uh, yeah, his face went right into the knee of Frazier. Like right on the chin. Yeah. 
right here you got that's what happens you go the out was it's like you got co-cocked right there yeah that's what happens you go face first man checking him out make sure he's okay appears to be fine yeah he held up one finger and he said four now that is three base hit with two RBIs okay that's what I was looking for So for Naquin, that's his third triple this year. Make it a 10 nothing ball game. Now Santana lifts one right field near the line. Eaton a long run over. Makes the catch in foul territory to end the inning. Tribe tacks on two more, and after four, they lead it 10 to nothing. Ball is brought to you by Levin Furniture for the best deals on furniture and mattresses. Shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. All Indians tonight. Cleveland 10, Chicago nothing. Fifth inning. And Brett Laurie leads off, hops the first pitch. Left field near the line. Lindor out into foul ground makes the catch. He overran it and still caught it. Run away. That's one of those tough plays because you're running on a full sprint to get there. And then the ball keeps coming back on yeah. you. It comes back from the seats into play. Three guys trying to get there, but the shortstop makes the catch. His first game back in there, letting them know. Pops, get back in there. And I pitch a little bit outside to Avisel Garcia. Line drive right field. Chisinau over his head. One hop the wall. He plays it fine. And that holds Garcia to a long single. Well, that ball was smoked on the line. <laughs> you might have thought you were going to have a play on it, but that ball was over his head before he could even take a step or two. Good low fastball, and he clipped it just perfectly. That ball was over Chisholm Hall's head before he could do anything with it. One on one out for JB Shuck. Tap one back to the mound his first time up. Takes a strike.
now the 0-2. And a ground ball right to Uribe. What a pick. Goes to second. There's one Kippers on the first. Not quite in time. Two down. He was out earlier taking some ground balls turning double plays just like this uh, at about 230 today and it throws a little bit high to keep this but Jason did everything he could to try and get rid of it but Chuck beats it out. And with two away Tim Anderson to the plate. In there for a strike. He did. High. And they count a ball and two strikes. Anderson grounded a third in the first, out on strikes in the fourth. He's one out of seven in the series. And that's a little too high. Again, full count. Swung out and missed, blew it by him at 95. And that will end the inning. Fifth strikeout of the night for Danny Salazar. Middle of the fifth. He's 10 0 Cleveland. For kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket located in the family deck at Progressive Field uh, by the kids clubhouse kids tickets only available at Indians.com.
Jason Kipnis doubled and scored in the first, walked in the second, struck out in the third. Down low. Kip's probably thinking when this game starts, oh good, I get a right-hander, it's James Shields, I don't have to worry about Quintana tonight. He sees Shields twice and then boom, another left-hander. Yeah, <laughs> that's the game can change like that in a hurry. Three balls and a strike. Matt Perk deals. And Kittness fouls it off of his leg and it goes all the way up to the first baseman of Brave. Chicago does have. Action in the bullpen. They got another reliever up. This is a right hander. Oh, yeah, right up the front foot. It's Matt Albers, right hander, getting loose for Chicago. And Kip is down on strikes. We're going down to Andre Nutt. Well, Danny Salazar is throwing the heat for the Indians. So I'm thinking, you, know, <laughs> oh, you guys always you. check the food out. Look at you. Let's see what this is like right here. Jalapenos. Got it all right here, baby. Hey, Arch, this is for you. You keep talking and keep working. <laughs> uh, I know one thing. You didn't pay for it. Nope. <laughs> the jalapenos give it a little enough heat. No, don't talk with your mouth full. Lindor takes it outside. Look at that. What a mess. <laughs> I need you to come down and clean me up. <laughs> All right, I'll get my power washer out. Be down with a case of wet naps. Bouncer to Anderson, the shortstop. Throws out Lindor. Two down. What part of. What part of bring us something back did he not understand oh, he there? Come on, you know better than that. All for one and one for none. Mike Napoli with a three-run shot capped. Uh, well, it didn't cap it, but it was the highlight of a five-run first. And Juan Uribe in the second that came from the score on a bizarre play. It's been all Indians tonight. Our in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Tyler Nakin with a two-run triple in the fourth. James Shields started for Chicago lasted an inning and two thirds. He was touched for seven earned runs on seven hits, walked three, struck out two. Matt Perk came on in relief of him. He's given up two runs. But he's now already nearing the 60 pitch mark as a reliever, so he's just about out of gas, I would imagine. Slow breaking ball foul back. Napoli with an opposite field three run homer. You just saw it on the game recap in that first inning. Boy, that got the joint jumping. I already had a run in at that point. The first five guys in that inning scored a run. Updated ERA for James Shields. They don't even want to say it. No. Napoli down on strikes. One, two, three, go the White Sox. One, two, three, goes that sandwich.
Indians up 10 to nothing now. And defensively for Cleveland, Michael Martinez has come into the ballgame in left field. Jose Ramirez takes over at shortstop. Day game tomorrow for the series finale. What a sports day it is shaping up to be for Cleveland. As the Indians will take on the White Sox tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. And then tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, the Cavaliers will play for the NBA championship. And our coverage begins on Fox Sports Ohio at 6.30 with Cavaliers Live. They'll have you covered. All the latest news from Oakland, California, Oracle Arena, home of the Golden State Warriors. Jeff Phelps, Campy, Fred, AC, Alley. We'll have it all for you. Whatever you do tomorrow night, cheer on the Cavs. Have fun. Be safe. Bouncer in the right field. Adam Eaton is two for three. Broke his bat. Yeah, that one cost him a bat, but he doesn't care. His second straight uh, hit. That's four hits now for the Sox. Stepping in for Chicago, number 79, Jose Swung out and missed. And Abreu. You got a no two double last time, so you had, to me, it seems like he'd be sitting off speed the way, you know, as hard as Salazar is throwing. When you're 0 2 and you throw a changeup down and away, and he's able to stay back and get it, that tells me that he's pretty much looking for it. Well, remember last night, Rick? He lines this one. It's a home run. run off the pole. Holy smokes. Jose Abreu shoots one down the right field line off the pole for a two run homer that breaks up the shutout here in the sixth inning. I thought that ball was slicing foul. I knew he hit it well. I didn't realize he hit it that well. I, it, that at first I wasn't ball down sure. Away. But then I saw Abreu taking yeah, off, so I thought, well, he must think this is going to stay fair. Look at fastball down and away. He sliced it down there into the corner. I mean, this is a strong man. Now he goes back and it hits the foul pole and comes back into play. So he certainly did hit it well. That's his tenth homer. RBI's number 40 and 41 for Abreu. And the Indians' lead is now 10 to 2. Salazar now giving up six home runs. That's the first one he's given up with anybody on base. He had five solo shots coming in. Jason Coates came on for Melky Cabrera. Pitch hit in the fourth inning and drew a walk. All right back. To delivery is a ground ball right at the shortstop. Jose Ramirez will throw him out. One away. It takes everything to become a national champion. The players, the course, major champ, major championship history, all coming together at the U.S. Senior Open. 
Scioto Country Club in Columbus, August 8th. For more information and to purchase tickets, go to 2016 Union US Senior Off speed pitch, Frazier taking, and that drops in for a strike. Pretty good pick there by Gomes. Yeah, it sure was. That ball was out in front of home plate, and he just backhanded it. It's not that easy. Up on him, three and one. Swing and a miss, full count. Trying to come back and get Fraser again. He struck him out last time with the bases loaded and one out. Pitch oh, got him looking. Just locked him up with a beautiful off speed pitch. Change up. My goodness. Strikeout number six. Call that it whatever you want. It just floated in. After throwing it 96 97, you just throw that change up for a strike. And the hitter could, he's locked up. Can't hit it after taking that fastball. Boy, oh boy. He's got it twice tonight. Says I'm fine. You always see the concern when catchers followed off another catcher. They turn around. They want to make sure you're okay, because they know exactly what it feels like. Anybody that puts that equipment on and gets behind the plate, including the umpires, they know. That big hook misses. Two and two. Good fastball. Just above the belt. And a full count. Sixty two out of ninety six pitches for strikes for Salazar. He has been. In command from the get go tonight. They retire the first 10 in a row to start. And by then, for all intents and purposes, this game was already history. It was 8 to nothing after two innings of play. And the way Danny was pitching, it didn't look like Chicago had much hope of getting back in it. Right to Santana, and that will end the inning. Sox get on the board on a two run homer by Abreu, middle of the sixth, 10 2 Cleveland.
Progressive Field tomorrow against the White Sox. Alan Jensen get our telecast started on Indians live at 1230 followed by the first pitch with us at one on Sports Time Ohio or streaming live on Fox Sports Go swing into summer presented by Miller Lite. Matt Albers be the third White Sox pitcher in the ball game tonight as he faces Ramirez Uribe and Chisholm Hall in the sixth. One through three to this point, doubled back in the first inning and came around to score. And that's belt high for a strike. Front of the plate, one and two. For the 31st time, he spent some time a few years ago in this Indians bullpen. It did a nice job for him while he was here. And that's outside ball four. So Albers walks the first man he faces tonight. That's been. The M.O. of any oh, yeah. Chicago pitchers first bat of your face you walk Isn't that amazing all three have done it. Well tribe town MVPs is the official kids fan club of the Cleveland Indians designed for kids ages six to fourteen memberships are only twenty dollars and include invitations to exclusive events and one of a kind tribe gear visit Indians.com for the information. That's the seventh walk issued tonight in all. By White Sox pitching. And as Juan Arebe swings and misses. How about Big Juan getting back in the lineup? He's two for three, two singles, an RBI. He scored twice. And a nice play defensively already in the game at third. And he socks this one. Deep center field. Back is shot. He's looking up. Over the 400 foot mark. A two run homer is third of the year. And the Indians get the two runs right back and lead it 12 to 2. Well, that didn't take long. And welcome back to the lineup. Wants three for four. Scored three runs, has three RBIs. This is going to be our ATT high speed replay. Straight, he knew it as soon as he hit it. Straight away center put a good swing on it down in his nitro zone and Shuck goes back and that ball's not coming back. And a strike to the outside corner. You'll see that sinker coming back over the middle of the plate and it was down enough where Juan liked it and boy got a good part of the bat to it straight away central he knew it. And now Lonnie looks 
takes one fairly deep center. Shuck has a beat on it this time and makes the catch one away. Some of the White Sox guys were joking before the series began about Juan Arribe, who started his career with the White Sox. He was part of that 2005 World Championship team. And they were saying, hey, when, when he played shortstop when he came up, he didn't have the greatest range, but if he got to it, you were out. Because he, he had great hands, he could feel the ball cleanly, and had really strong throwing arm. Still has a very good, accurate throwing arm from the third base position. But they, they were also joking about his age. They said, 37? Hmm, maybe more than that. <laughs> but yeah. you never know it the way he shows up every day with a smile well, on his face. Well, he comes up and everybody likes to kid him because he is the elder statesman on the ball club. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of fun for him, I'm sure, because they make him feel young again, you know? No so it, it's a good time for him. But, you know, in his career, you look at where he's played and how many times he's been to the playoffs as a, as a player and I got to tell you he's been on a lot of very good ball clubs that have been there. I know Andre could attest to this but you cannot underestimate the importance that Arebe has played in the development of Jose Ramirez. You know we're, we're talking about how great a year Jose is having. Right. I think Juan Arebe is a big reason for that. There's a fly ball to right. In comes Adam Eaton. Mm -hmm. Two down. Andre, what say Matt, you, my man? I totally agree with you. And I mean, so much so, you'll see something tomorrow with Father's Day. We kind of kid with Jose about Father's Day and Uribe. And he laughed when I said it to him. But he, saw, you know, he saw me in his own way that he doesn't know where he will be without him. He's relaxed him. And I think there's a conversation they had in spring training where Juan kind of told him, he says, "You've got enough talent, man, that you can play this game for a long time. But you got to show the manager you deserve to be out there every day." That meant something to him to have a guy like Arebe tell him that he can play, and, and we've seen it. We talked about it on the road. But Terry Francona is now calling him a weapon. He's not just a guy that they put out there. He sees him as a weapon for the Indians. Well, and for that goes to show you that everybody needs somebody, and that's like his best coach he could have, Uribe, for for Ramirez. Ramirez understands him. He looks up to him. So, you know, not, that doesn't happen. And, and when you talk about Latin players coming over here, this. You know, the light finally went off for Ramirez. And like you have said so many times before, too, it's one thing to have a guy in a club and say, hey, this guy's a veteran, he's a leader. But you have to be able to play still. Yeah. You can't be just a, a mascot, a guy who's in the clubhouse and performance. Yeah, I mean, Jason Giambi hit some huge home runs. He could still do it. So, right. guys, his words carried a little more weight. I think the fact that Juan Arebe still has something left in the tank. Makes his words go a little extra. Absolutely right. Tyler Naquin tees off deep right field. Eaton waves goodbye. A no doubt about it. Shot to the lower deck in right field. And Tyler Naquin has a four RBI night. And he's a double shot was, of the cycle. I was just going to say this is right now a blowout, but uh, he is one hit away from the cycle, and he needs the double. So he has three hits and four ribbies right in his wheelhouse. Off speed, a little two seamer down, and he knew it as soon as he hit it that that was going to be into the seats. They're fighting for it out there. They're into the aisles. Dude looked like he was trying to stay in his chair and catch it, and he fell out all at the same time. Well, I was a little concerned when he went diving in the head first to third base. He got clunked pretty good in the jaw, but he seems to be okay. It's been a two homer inning for Matt Albers. He gave up a two run shot to Ariba, and now a solo smash to Naquin. Pops it up. Is it going to be caught by Frazier? Yes. Inning over. But the Indians make some more noise here in the sixth. A pair of home runs, 13 to Cleveland.
is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. By Ford, built Ford tough. And by Subway, fresh is what we do. Cleveland on top 13 and two as we go to the seventh inning. Kittner's jerseys, the giveaway for tonight's crowd and a big crowd here at the ballpark. Money, definitely more than I, will be over 30,000. Yeah, I, I would think so. Last night, 27,912, biggest crowd at home since the opener. Jabba Chamberlain getting loose in the Indians bullpen as Salazar has hit the 100 pitch mark, 65% for strikes. Brett Laurie 0 for 2. Fouled out his last time up. Swung through at 2 and 2. Coming into this inning, half of Salazar's outs were recorded on three pitches or less. There's a lazy pop center field Naquil. One away. Danny Salazar has been very good really from the outset Rick. Yeah he came out uh, he was throwing a lot of quality strikes early. Fastball to change up. Typical Salazar. He's given up two runs at this point. And you look at his starts this year, and that's Danny in a nutshell. He goes out there, his team seems to score him runs when he's out on the mound and he settles in. One guy left the yard. That was a Brayu, but other than that, he's been very good. Abisel Garcia swing and a miss. To Garcia, curveball misses up and in. Danny cruising through the first three innings, nine up, nine down. Had a little trouble in the fourth and the sixth. Story the other day, and I didn't even bother to really read it. I just lost it. I saw the headline. I saw who was talking, and it was a highly uh, visible national baseball writer talking about the concept of should Major League Baseball games be shortened to seven innings. And I thought, what? Wow. I mean, why do they want to do that? I didn't read the article. Okay. I didn't really okay. get into it. I just understand. But it was it, this wasn't just some crackpot. Hey, what do you think about this? This is actually evidently been discussed. Somebody that doesn't want to sit three hours for a baseball game. He tied him up, struck him out, two down. But just think for a moment. If that were to come to pass, it would change everything about Major League Baseball. I mean, all the records, everything would be. Just yeah, I 120 can't. plus years of baseball would be sort of like, uh, yeah, well, nothing's relevant anymore because the game's completely different. Right. And there'd be probably be some guys out of jobs too. Sure there would. Bullpen guys would be a thing of the past. Yeah. Great yep. job by Danny Salazar tonight. He goes six and two thirds, gives up just two runs on two hits, and look at this crowd giving him a standing ovation with the Indians comfortably ahead, 13 to two.
Callaway, he he was very good here tonight, and he came out right out of the chute, throwing strikes, working ahead. He wasn't laboring. He had a, that tempo we talk about. It's so important for him. He had it tonight. Java Chamberlain on for the 17th time this year. You know, for Danny, before we leave and go on to, to Java, that seven times this year he's gone out and, and pitched for one or fewer runs allowed. Tonight it happened to be a two run home run that ball left the ballpark and that was it. But his offense certainly supplied him with many more than that. This is, this is how good has Danny Salazar been this year? He gave up two runs in six and two thirds innings tonight, and his ERA went up. Yeah, he's been good. Started the night at 2.19, it'll go up to 2.23. You know you're going good when you pitch well and your ERA goes up a little bit. Yeah, you don't worry about the ERA. You want to see that W next to your name. That's that's the bottom line. JB Shuck out in front, one and two to count. Tigers lead the Royals, one nothing in the first in Kansas City. Up and away. In the American League East, Baltimore beat Toronto today 4 to 2. So the Orioles stay in first place and they knock the Blue Jays two games off the pace. Red Sox will stay a game back as they won earlier today. Strike three called. J.B. Shuck is punched out. Jabba Chamberlain strikes out the only man he faces here in the seventh inning. Stretch time in Cleveland, 13 2 drive. Here at the ball yard. And they had a better time last night because of the way it ended. Carlos Santana sending them home happy with a walk-off home run. Our great clip of the game from last night. 0-2. First walk-off homer since August of 2014. Almost two four years. Yeah, he has four though. Four walk-offs. And you're right, not to be overlooked. An 0-2. 0-2 pitch, yeah. 
little uh, questioning on what pitch should I throw him and the catcher getting along he ended up throwing him the breaking ball Santana hit it out I hey, like our Buick stat of the game there that's pretty cool yeah it is Jim Tomey with nine walk off home runs Albert at six Corey Snyder before we called him walk off home runs had five. I thought it was interesting that Casey Blake had four. Yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, guys at the right time at the right spot, man, they they hit them. I would have guessed Ben Broussard ahead of Casey Blake. It seemed like Broussard had one every other yeah, week. Walk offs, especially had grand slams where he pinch hit grand slam here and the one a game. Yeah. I think that might have been the same night he played a concert. He played in a concert after. Remember he got up on stage. Yeah, he would do some. Yeah, he was a little. What do you call it, a fledgling <laughs> musician? Slow hook by Zach Duke mix misses inside. Boy, did it ever just barely. Right now, Kip's like, really? You you couldn't let Matt Alvarez face one more batter like me, so I could have at least face a right-hander. You had to go get another. Yeah, election. well, he's trying to get <laughs> each one of his guys an inning tonight, so there's he's going to have some arms tomorrow as well if needed. Tomorrow in the ball game, a couple of Carlos is going against each other. Rodon against Carrasco. In the uh, the final game on Sunday, 110 start. Then it's time to go home and watch a basketball game. Kipnis down on strikes, one away. Yeah, and again tomorrow, after you watch the Indians and White Sox here on Sports Time Ohio. Have your Father's Day barbecue. Get settled in for, for game time at 6:30. Tune into Fox Sports Ohio. You want the best local game coverage to get yourself ready for that game. 6:30 yeah. to 7:30. Cavaliers live with Fred, AC, Jeff Phelps, Campy, Alley. They'll have the team that brought them all to you exactly. every all you year long. Them, you watched them all season long. They'll be in Oakland. They'll be here in Cleveland. They'll have the whole thing covered. Soup to nuts on Fox Sports Ohio. Then you can turn over to the network. And watch the game. They've got to be excited about it. Oh, I mean, they got to be pumped, huh? That'd be fun. Go all year, and that's what you live for. Get down to that final game. Look, I know it was heartbreaking for us back in '97, but there's there's nothing like a game seven. The the anticipation, the build up, and once it starts, every moment, yeah, you're on the yeah. edge of your seat until it's. Finished. And you want to go home the yeah. winner. You want to win that last game. It would be an incredible, I mean, an incredible comeback if you're down. No one's ever done it. Isn't that something? It's never Three happened. Three to one. No one's ever done it in the finals. So they have a chance to do something very special. And what a way to do it. That would be the way to do it. The team that put them out last year. Well, and if you're talking about ending over 50 years of championship droughts in this city, wouldn't that be something oh. that's the way it ended? With yeah. something that had never yeah. before happened? E exactly. That's the way it should happen. Yeah, the stage is set. It's just a matter of waiting for the time to tip it off. Where are you going to go? Are you watching it at home? Yeah. Yeah, don't call, don't text, don't even, <laughs> I'm turning everything off. Don't bug me. <laughs> the 3 2 pitch. Down low, ball four. Well, at least uh, he waited to hit her. He, he waited. The first. Yeah, he I'm didn't sorry. get the memo. Okay, no, he did not. He waited one hitter. Robin Ventura was not going to wait that long. Wow, that's eight walks now by Sox pitching tonight. Looks like Michael Enoa is going to be coming in for Chicago. 
It's a 13 2 Cleveland lead, but as you pointed out, Robin Venturi, he can't just leave these guys out or he's got to work with the same bullpen. Yeah, tomorrow. he's got the same guys are going to have to. So we'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. Brink rails in left field, right field corner. Yeah, and they are all full as well. The fireworks coming up after the ball game tonight. Michael Enoa making just his second appearance for Chicago. He'll come on with one on one out in the seventh inning, and Mike Napoli will be the batter. Made his major league debut four days ago against Detroit, and he struck out two and two. No hit innings. Michael Enoa came from Oakland along with Jeff Samarja in that trade the White Sox made a couple of years ago during the offseason. Chris Jimenez getting in at bat tonight. Thank for Mike Napoli, who was oh, who was a one for four. He had the big home run, the three run shot in the first. It's up. Hey, you gotta move around sometime. <laughs> You know there's only one voice you can hear down there and it's not any of the team. <laughs> He's talking to Mike Sarba at third base. Look at him still chirping. Sarba you don't have anything to do. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Yeah, all right. He's chewing their gum. Got their sunglasses on. Well it looked like home plate umpire Bill Miller was going to turn and ring him up. Watch, watch the full plate umpire. I'm not picking on him. Just watch. It looks like he's going to say, "You're uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> my bad. Sorry." What's his name? And Naked Gun. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> Leslie yeah. Nielsen. He wanted to get up and do that. The walk. There's a liner into the glove of Frazier at third. Two down. Jose Ramirez has scored three runs tonight. Double walk. He's on a fielder's choice. Came on to score as well. Yeah, that's been a team party. 13 runs, 13 hits. They have three home runs. Yeah, two came in that sixth inning. Jose 
fouls it back. 31,066. The attendance announced here tonight. And they were treated to a barrage of Indians runs in the first inning when the Tribe scored five times. Blew it open early. Now Jose Ramirez looking to add to it. Drives a single into right field, and Michael Martinez stops in second. After the Indians scored five in the first, they came back with three more in the second, chasing James Shields, the Chicago starter, from the game. They added two more in the fourth on a two out, two run triple by Tyler Naquin. And they scored three times in the sixth. A two run homer by Aribe and a solo shot by Naquin. Tyler Naquin has four runs driven in here tonight. On well, Aribe checks the swing. He's had a good night at the plate. Aribe is three for four. With three runs batted in, including a two run homer in his first game back after missing four straight. Low and away. Well, Juan got into one here when a Matt Albers two seamer. Coming back out over the plate down in his wheelhouse. Hit it out to straightaway center field. His third home run this year, his third hit of the game, his third RBI, and he's also scored three runs tonight as well. White Sox have spent an awful lot of time defensively out in that field. I'm watching those guys just standing around waiting, and they've been out there for most of the game. My pop. This should get him out of the inning. Lori back, called off. Eaton has it. And we'll go to the eighth. 13 2, Cleveland. is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. There's Salazar on the right <laughs> with the jersey he was wearing tonight and Michael Brantley on the left. Yeah Michael continuing to work his way back he said it's going as well as it it can at this point but he still doesn't really have any kind of timetable for his return yeah people keep asking us hey when's Michael coming hey we have no clue we really don't I don't think he does and maybe part of it is him managing the expectations because things just kind of got 
probably way out ahead of themselves in spring training when it looked like oh he's going to be back no problem. Well when he came back at spring training and his first game hit a home run and got a base hit and threw a guy out you, everybody thought the exact same thing maybe including him. I know I did I thought well shoot he's going to be ready for opening. Yeah day. Well, that's what we're saying are you kidding me. Um, now we're sitting here going into the all star break it probably won't see him before then that's for, I wouldn't think. Well we're just a, what about a little less than a month away from the all star break. Mm -hmm. Yeah 18th and uh, the tenth is our last game against New York July 10th so we come back home on the 4th of July. So I, I wouldn't expect him. I'd be shocked. Let me put it that way. Well, let's love to have him, but I I would be shocked. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Hopefully we'll see him by the breaker after. Well, I got to tell you, the Indians have uh, they've hung in there well this year. They've worked hard. They're finding a way. They're really playing well at home now. Well, I think that's one of those questions that you know we always like to pose. If you would have told me as Tim Anderson has rung up on a pitch from Tommy Hunter. But seriously if you would have told me that the Indians would not have Michael Brantley basically. Yeah. For yeah. The first Ten three games. months of the season. Right. And yet they'd be in first place. I'd say no, I don't think there's any Carrasco way. missed five weeks. Yeah. Carrasco missed five weeks. The, the bullpen got off to a bad start in April again. I know that every team deals with injuries but you're talking about Brantley. Who's essentially Two of your best the, players. He's the cornerstone of that lineup. Absolutely. He may be in that clubhouse too. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm surprised. Pleasantly surprised. But you, you, you look for how it's been done, and that starting pitching has been lights out. That you're in every game. They give you an opportunity, and this team never quits, and they find ways to win. There's no perfect team and I'll tell you in this division it could stay like this all year because there's been ups and downs by every single team in the division. You know the, and as, at least the top four we're looking at if you if you move Minnesota out of there Detroit is at there up and down Kansas City the Indians. Jose Ramirez throws out Adam Eaton two down. Well with the Indians that guy has picked up some of the slides yeah. Brantley being out because yes, of his ability to play everywhere. Francisco Lindor has shown no signs of any quote unquote sophomore slump. He's, Not at all. He's been fantastic. Jason Kipnis has been Jason Kipnis steady as she goes. Zappoli. Santana hasn't hit for an average but he's hit some home runs and driven in runs which is what you expect. Napoli's done the same thing only hit for better average and and he's done a great job with runners in scoring positions. So. Gomes has been a little disappointing offensively, but he's got to pick it up. Abreu with a base hit, but this even with Gomes, Rick, and you and I've talked about this before, the batting average is, is a head shaker. But yeah, seven homers, 27 yeah. RBIs. I, he, right. He's had some big, meaningful hits at times. That's exactly right. You know the. You want that average to come up. It's not going to come up to 280, 290, or things like that. He's just got to go out and let the situation dictate and do whatever the job is called for. You know, Rajay Davis has been a, a great Boy. addition when yeah. the legs are still fresh and stealing bases. I mean, he's he's almost halfway to 40 steals. There's a ground ball, hard hit. Kipnis gobbles it up, throws him out. Middle of the eighth. Indians rolling tonight, lead it 13 to 2.
Mazda. For the Indians, the separation of the fastball and changeup for James Shields, boy, they just they they jumped him right yeah. out of the gate. Yes, he never had did. a chance tonight. And uh, I, so I I can't you know I I'd love to get your take on it because it happened so fast. I couldn't tell if it was just good, plain old aggressive approach by the Indians hitters, or if you saw something that that said you James Shields is just lost. He it. didn't have his command or control. He walked. Uh, it, Santana on four pitches. Kipnis, he left the ball up, the second and third, ball off the wall. Ground ball into the hole. Laurie tries to get it up, throws, pulls a guy off first base. Next guy hits him out of the Boom. ballpark. It's yeah. four nothing. Yeah. It's like walking in and someone just punches you in the face, you go down. I mean, it happened that quickly. Yeah, that's why when we sent it down to Andre that first time, he's he's sitting ringside because it felt like yeah heavyweight that's exactly what it was and they came out and went Mike Tyson on him. and I think that was their that was their goal to come out because they know he's been struggling they didn't want him to get anything going in his direction so that's why I say and I didn't mean it in a, in a mean or mean way it's back to the drawing board because they were trying to work on some things for him on this start as you said they were going to bump him and push him back maybe a day or two but um, it, it didn't work out that way so now he's got to go out and, and figure it out again. For his next start. Line to first and a nice grab by Jose Abreu. And Lonnie Chisnall retired one down. Our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. That home run by Napoli. Oppo. That looked like a little breaking ball out over the plate there. And now yeah, that had a lot of carry to it. And that was a three run by. Look at Shields. Oh my God. He's shaking his head. Now this has been a quality pitcher for many, many years. For him, you can see he's a beaten man when he's out there, and he just don't know what's going on. That's that's what it looked like to me. Well, unfortunately, we saw firsthand when he was in Tampa occasionally when the Indians would face the race, but then when he moved to Kansas City, and you're you're facing him multiple times during the regular season. I mean, he he missed out on the World Championship, but he pitched him into the World Series two years ago. I mean, he was a big part of that Kansas City turnaround. Yeah, yes, he was. I mean, you don't get the nickname Big Game James because people don't think you're a good pitcher. No, it's you know what? It, 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 it's unfortunate when you see a guy of his caliber struggling like that. But if you stay around long enough in this game, look at the yeah. C. Nobody, C. Sabathia, Cliff Lee. At some point, it catches up to you. And Ed, sooner or later, you make that decision. You know he he's getting paid for what he's done in this game right now, not for what you know he's gonna do. And sometimes that, that's a, a cruel reality and we're going to see that more in sports because of the long term contracts when the guys are making big money and they can't put up the big numbers like they once did. Two and two for Jan Gomes. Well I'm looking forward to tomorrow the finale Carlos Carrasco Carlos Rodon another left hand. But Carrasco He's always pitched well against yeah. us Rodon has. Yep. Played on the right side. Carrasco yeah. took the loss uh, his last time yeah, out. Well, against he's Kansas looking City. for a win since he's been off the disabled. He hasn't been able to get one. So, and Chicago hasn't exactly been a great matchup for him for whatever reason. Right. But we shall see as the Indians prepare to go for a sweep now of the White Sox. And this game appears to be comfortably in hand. It's a great thing about baseball. You can never really say it with 100% certainty. But this is about as close as you're going to get when you're up 13 to 2 in the eighth yeah, inning. Yeah, this is uh, this is over. <laughs> Sorry to say, they're waiting for fireworks. They just want this game to prolong a little bit and get some dark skies. Well, that's the thing. They didn't want to. Indians officials didn't want this game to go too fast yeah, because nope. you got a fireworks yeah, a six show. Six o'clock start, and folks, it's going to be three hours. Folks who are wondering the reason it's a six o'clock start with a fireworks show after is all because of network television requirements. Gomes out looking two down. We uh, we weren't able to start this game at seven and televise it so that's why we had to back it up to six as the network TV window. Tyler Naquin our Miller time moment of the game. He's been fantastic a career night with four runs batted in and now he's got a chance 
to have uh, a career night with four hits How about that? and a double to make it a cycle. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see that. Stuff going on in this just, just keep right on running, man. <laughs> Be like if you're a crab going to water. Keep on going until they tag you. Like a crab going to water. I like it. Uh huh. Okay. No player has ever hit for the cycle here at Progressive Field. And the last to do it in Cleveland was 1942. Wow. That's right, because uh, your guy Andre did it in, in uh, Boston. Fenway, Fenway right? Park. Yeah. Pronk did it in Minnesota. Yep. The 02 up and away. Pronk's still one of the most unusual. Cycles because yeah, of that and crazy the baggy turf. Does. Sure. His double was just like an infield. That were the infielders giant like this. chopper. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And the one-two. Aikwood almost got plunked. Tell what, this guy's got a pretty decent arm. He he lets it loose and it jumps up there at 95 miles an hour. Thirteen runs on fourteen hits overall for Cleveland. Now the two-two, going away in a full count. The payoff pitch. Tigers Royals tied 2 2 in the second inning. So a lot of action early in that game at Kauffman Stadium. Kansas City began the night a half game back in the Indians. Detroit two and a half back, Chicago three and a half out. In the payoff pitch, another foul back. And Aikman wants that fourth hit. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you may have to expand your zone a little bit to try and get it. Sure, he knows he's not even thinking about that young pitcher. He's just trying to get him out. Again, the 3 2. Breaking ball, and he missed outside. He tried to wrap it around the outside corner. Did not do it. Naquin has reached safely all five times tonight with yeah. two walks. Now good for him, man. That's a great day. Five bad bats, two walks, three hits, single, triple, homer, four ribbies. It's been a great night for Tyler. Top of the order now, Carlos Santana. He walked on four pitches the first time up. I think he's seen four pitches total since then. <laughs> That's true. I'm not sure, but it, it seems like every time he's come up since then, he's made the last out of, of an inning. Not this time. Line drive, base hit in the right field. Naquin stops at second. So Santana turns that one around in a hurry. Fastball and said, I'm getting on this one. I'm, I'm getting on this train. Now, Jason Kipnis doubled and scored in the first, walked in the second, and struck out in his last two trips. Back. Yeah. 
I was just reading the Indians game notes. And they always do a section there. This day in music. A tribute to the uh, Cleveland being home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. On this day 1974 the drummer for a group called Rare Earth Day. Was arrested for throwing his drumsticks into the crowd. <laughs> what would they have done to Steph Curry back then? <laughs> they probably would have thrown him in jail for throwing his mouthpiece at a paying customer. Drumsticks into the crowd. He was arrested. Yeah. Hey, we forgot. We got to wish our man Sandy Alomar happy birthday. He's the 5 0 today. Is he really? Santos, happy 50th. Kipnis with a liner caught by the shortstop Anderson, ending the inning. No runs, a hit. Happy birthday, Sandy. 13 2, Cleveland. The ninth inning 13 to 2 over the White Sox over here in the corner at Progressive Field along with Jensen Lewis. I'm Al Pulowski. Boy Jensen so much to talk about tonight but how about this offense 13 runs on 15 hits. They started scoring in the first inning and they didn't stop. Well they did what they had to do and took care of a guy who has struggled. We know James Shields has been a lot better than what he's showed but you take the Kansas City sweep you can almost eradicate that completely by taking care of business today and now you have a chance to gain that back tomorrow with Cookie on the Hill. Boy, a huge crowd tonight too. Great oh, this crowd. is awesome. Great yeah. night. Indians ahead of the White Sox 13 to 2. Join us for Indians live after the game brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Back upstairs now to Matt and Rick. Fellas. All right. Thanks Al. Here in the ninth inning Dan Otero to try to finish it off. Todd Frazier swings at the first pitch fouls it back out of play. Frazier watches one miss inside. Thirteen runs on fifteen hits, no errors, ten left for Cleveland. Two runs, six hits, an error, five stranded for Chicago. And Frazier pops back into the seats. Missed inside, two and two. Bullseye, and he's out looking. Todd Frazier barking at the umpire. That ball's right down Broadway. Uh, he's had a rough night three straight times. He's gone down on strikes. Maybe a little frustration right there. Chicago, 
Get a pinch hitter here for Deanna Navarro as Tyler Saladino. Will bat. And he takes a strike. Stick around after the ball game for Indians live. Andre, unless indigestion has <laughs> overtaken him yeah, after that yeah. sandwich that he purchased, ate, um, and failed to share with us. That'll catch up with him later. He's going to try to talk to Tyler Naquin. Unless the jalapeno breath that he breathes on him forces Tyler to run away. <laughs> there he is. That is finest. Oh, look at that. Oh, mom and pops will be proud. Swing a ground ball by Arebe in the left field. And Saladino with a pinch hit single here in the ninth. Brett Laurie to the plate, 0 for 3 on the night. Otero can be a ground ball machine. He's probably hoping Lori beats one into the ground, turn two, and end this baby. That would be nice. Except that ball's hit pretty well. Deep center field. Back goes Tyler Nakel and runs it down. Just shy of the warning track, and why not? The kind of night he's had. Make a great play defensively for the second time tonight. Line drive over his head. He's going back on it. Gets a good break on the run. Reaches up and makes the catch. Indians went out of way. For continuing that streak at home. He made a good play in the first inning of this game on a long fly ball hit by Abreu. So it's down to this and this crowd of just over 31,000 up on its feet. And a ground ball foul by Garcia. They have enjoyed this one. It is one of those days when it just when it just stinks here in January and February. Yeah, early March. These are the days you just dream about when you're in Cleveland. No question. One of these days where you just sit out, it's not hot, it's not cold, it's just perfect. There's no humidity. You come to the ball game and they score five in the yeah, first. Yeah, you're in shirt <laughs> sleeves, you're having an adult beverage or two, your kids are there, everybody's having a great time. O2 pitch. Swinging a ground ball foul. Jim Folk's not looking at the radar every five seconds. He can just <laughs> relax for a change. I see him down there. He's just waiting for the umpires to leave. He's standing right behind home plate now. He told me this is the first Saturday in all year is. where I haven't been glued to the, the yeah, radar. I'll at home. tell you what, that guy could put in as many hours as anybody, but he looks like he's very relaxed. Otero's 0 2. Upstairs. One 
two pitch. And that's foul off the foot of Garcia. Oh. He went hopping out of the home plate area. He's already got that protection on that lead leg, but watch where this hits him. Uh, oh man, that's like a bony part of the top of your foot, huh? Yeah, that hurts. Oh. That hurts. That's a thud. Again, the one-two. He just bearing in on him. Well, that's what happens. Those sinker ballers, they keep throwing them in there. You foul one off, they're gonna throw another one in there, Trey. Get you to dig it out. And the one two on its way at a ground. Look out, foul. Thought that was going to get some ground as it went off to the right, but it just stayed on a line drive right beyond the dugout into the crowd. He struck him out to end the game. Dan Otero finishes what the Indians offense started tonight. A 13-2 Cleveland win. And a chance to sweep the White Sox tomorrow afternoon. As the drive has now won seven in a row at home. They are 37 and 30 on the year. And they'll stay in first place in the Central Division regardless of what the Royals do tonight at home against Detroit. Winning pitcher. Is Danny Salazar? He is now eight and three on the year. With the loss, White Sox are 33 and 35. James Shields, the loser, he's two and nine altogether this year. 0 and two as a member of the Chicago White Sox. Well, you know, it was a close one last night. Low scoring game. They wasted no time tonight. They came out of the shoots in a hurry. Five runs in the first inning, and uh, it was just turning it over to your pitcher. And, you know they win the first two games of this series and they've got a chance to go for the sweep tomorrow so here we go man let's keep it rolling they're playing very well very good baseball here in Cleveland 13 2 is the final a final word when we come back.